every week. And this includes an in-person teaching that she does as well as a virtual version. So you might have seen some Family Faith Night videos. And um, she also always teaches on the upcoming Sunday's message. So it's super great because anything that she would have done this Wednesday also applies to the scripture that is for this Sunday. Does that make sense? So this allows for all of our kids to have kind of a sneak peek at what the scripture might be, to engage in a different way, and for families to be in conversation after Family Faith Night um, is done for that Wednesday. So for message this morning, we have put together a chunk of the Family Faith Night video to invite you into an exciting ministry that you may not have seen yet, and also to hear the message in a a new and fun way. And completely by coincidence, um, Daniel Kirschbaum, who is a mission partner here, he's on our vision team, and he's a great friend of mine, is running a young adult ELCA program called Abide. And it's an online small group study for young adults. And so a little bit ago, he asked me to do um, a message for one of their first small group studies. And completely by accident, I, uh, my message was inspired by Samuel that we're going to dig into today. And my favorite hymn that I mentioned is also what Anna was inspired by for her message. So we kind of have some crazy happy accident spirit movement overlap today. And so we've put together kind of um, a message that will combine some of the different ministries that are happening as well as God's word for you this morning. So um, with that, I invite you to be a part of our message for today. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. If someone calls out to you again, say, speak, Lord, I'm listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there and God called out again, just as he had done the other times. God said, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel replied, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Samuel 3, 10 B. I have called you by name. You are mine. Isaiah 43, 1. Hi, kids! Oh, hi, guys. I'm on the phone. Shh, be quiet for a minute. Who is that? Who, who is that? Hello? Is that the kid of Family Faith Hello? Night Kids? Who are you? You never told me your name. <laughs> I still don't know how this thing works. Oh, is it, um, can you, can you, you call smell me, me though? If you don't know how it works, why'd you call me? I I texted who? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have email or Twitter. Um, yeah. I, this is a phone though. Um, Fred, somebody's on the phone and they don't know how this works. I oh, who is it? <laughs> oh, I heard him too. Oh, who are you talking to? Well, I think it's for you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I can't talk to them. Oh, I think we're supposed to be doing family faith night, though. Yeah, but we're on the phone with people. Oh, I always wondered why a camera was showing us on there. (laughs) I just thought that was Snapchat or Twitter. We're doing a telephone or tell them what it's called. We're doing a telephone, so call in. We're on the phone. All right, well, have a good day, everyone. Goodbye. of me and they kind of pull me back all right 
And so we're going to talk about that. We're going to kind of break it down. But first of all, I want to read to you those scriptures again. The scriptures come, the first one comes from Samuel, which is in the Old Testament. And it says, so Eli, who is Samuel's master, so Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. If someone calls out to you again, say, speak, Lord, I'm listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there. The Lord called out just as he had done the other times. And God said, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel replied, speak, Lord, I'm listening. Kids, we hear in that verse about how God calls to us. Eli had been Samuel's master, and Samuel had grown up in Eli's house and was accustomed to being called by Sam or by Eli for things. And so this one particular night, he kept hearing a voice say, Samuel, Samuel. And so Samuel, being obedient, went to this voice, and he was like, yes, Eli, Eli, what is it you need? And oh, do you see that? Vanilla Sky Bucket's trying to nurse. Not very successful. Anyway, what was I saying? Um, so, so Samuel went and he was like, Eli, Eli, what is it you need? And Eli said, Samuel, I didn't call for you. And it happened several times. And finally, the last time when Samuel went and he's like, Eli, what do you need? Eli, who had a lot of wisdom and who loved God very much, said, Samuel, this time I want you to say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. When we do that, we recognize, first of all, that God is talking to us. Also, the relationship there that God is God and we are a servant to God. We love God. We recognize that God is the one who has authority in our life. And we want to do everything to serve him. Right? But then that next part of, I'm listening. My heart is open. I'm ready to receive and to hear your call. Then we're going to talk about the second verse, and it comes from Isaiah, also in the Old Testament. It says, I, meaning God, have called you by name. You are mine. And that's the most important part of the call that I want to talk to you kids about, is how I have a goat trying to eat my shirt. (laughs) The sign for call. I love it because here again, God's hands grab a hold of us first. Before we are sent in any direction, before we are straightened, before any of that happens, we receive God's hands over us that say, hey, Anna, hey, child, hey, parent, hey, grandparent, you're mine. I've got you. God's holding me, okay? We are not sent on anything. We are not kind of pulled back until we recognize that we belong to God. So it's after that, that recognition, that all of a sudden sometimes we're pulled back. And when I am pulled back, the first thing I want to do is go, I want to look up. I want to say, God, I'm looking to you. I need your strength. I'm not doing it on my own, whatever it is. But I'm pulled back, and a lot of times I'm stopped from going in the direction that I was headed. And then oftentimes, I'm kind of given a little pressure. See this hand, this thumb? It's like, hey, Anna Lynn, go this way. Or Anna Lynn, stop. Or Anna Lynn, talk. Listen to me. Receive my call in your life. So kids, in a little bit, you're going to see me signing a song along with Faith, who is singing it. And it's a song called, Here I Am, Lord. And I want you to watch as when I sign that song, you'll see, I have heard you calling in the night. And every time I am called, when I sign that song, I'm reminded and I'm brought to tears of whose I am. And no matter what I'm called to, I am first of all reminded that he's got me. God's got me. And therefore, nothing can go wrong because ultimately, God's hands rest upon these shoulders. And God's holding me. Would you please pray with me? 
Oh, Lord Jesus. Thank you for calling each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that it is you who hold us. It is you who love us. And with you in our life, all is well. So Jesus, help us to rest in that. Help us to pause in that. And help us, Lord, to give everything to you, Jesus. Remind us that it is your work that we do. And we are forever grateful. We love you, Jesus, so much. And it is in your name that we pray. Everyone remember, you are called. You're loved. You're important. And you're set free then to go. Go. Let God lead. Let him call. Love you. God be with you. My name is Faith Phelan, and I am the church administrator at New Heights Lutheran Church in Black Earth, Wisconsin. Born and raised in the ELCA, I am an optimist, a creation lover, a musician, and a wife. As a musician, you may recognize me as a co-writer and I were recently chosen as the ELCA 2022 National Youth Gathering theme song. We are so excited to gather and praise and worship our awesome boundless God in Minneapolis next summer. As a new mission partner at my congregation, I've recently spent a lot of time with staff, um, volunteers, leadership teams, reflecting on the last year and a half. For me, it was full of a lot of firsts. Um, I graduated from college. I moved to a new city. I started a new job. I got married. Um, crazy. But like a lot of you, I also lived through a pandemic with political and social unrest, um, broken and strained relationships, gained and lost memories and opportunities, and tried to find my place in all of that. As I reflect on abide and surrender, I reflect on our need for reflection, on our need for space, processing, space to just be and think, dream and listen. In the chaos of living each day, I'm one to move on and move forward, right? To say, uh, look, God, you've got it. Everything's good. It is well with my soul. Nothing to worry about over here. But sometimes what I think is great faith is actually living in great ignorance and dismissal. See, God doesn't call us to just trudge through each day because sometimes in that we forget to see the, the sick man across the road to hear the cries of those in pain and suffering, to see the imperfection in the spaces that we reside in, that we live within. No, God calls us to live into those moments, knowing that he is beside us in great love and mercy and grace the whole time. As a musician, one of my favorite hymns is Here I Am, Lord. It goes, Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my arms. This text is based off of a passage in Samuel where um, Samuel is in bed and the Lord is calling to him and he in his unrest, he goes, oh, what, what is that? He gets distracted, and he runs to his master, Eli, and he says, what is it? Eli goes, what are you talking about? Go back to bed. Like, what are you doing? And Samuel goes back to bed, and the Lord continues to call to him, and Samuel continues to, to be lost in everything else, and he can't hear that the Lord is calling to him in that moment. See, for me, I forget that being in relationship with Christ is surrendering all of that other chaos so that we can better hear the Lord. Surrendering our hopes, surrendering our fears, surrendering what we're mourning and grieving and also what we want and wish and um, would like to be. Surrendering our identity to remember that we are a child of God, and that that is what grounds us. I'm known for being strong and confident and bold, but when I get bogged down and I push my struggles away and my disappointments and my worries or the things that I am determined to do, I forget to invite the Lord and the Spirit into the space to work through me. 
so that I can bear witness to all of that goodness that is within that chaos. The grace and mercy and love that is happening around us. So today I invite you to reflect. Reflect on yesterday, on four months ago, on a year ago, on a year and a half ago. Take time to surrender all that you might be keeping in and to surrender all that you wish the world was. To invite God into that space. Send me? No! I do not want that. You, come on, here I am, Lord, send me. Uh, you probably remember me. I was here like a month ago or so, and I was looking for a big boy job. You remember I'm big boy Julius Van der Paar, strongest man in the world. Ah, yes, yet who could forget? I mean, how could we forget such a big guy who uh, breaks down all the doors? Every single one of them. And, and wants to work for the Lord, as long as it involves something really important. And, of course, big boyish. Yeah, uh, now, of course, we remember you. Now, what, uh, what can we do for you? Go ahead. Tell them the real reason you're here. That you're actually not as strong as you think. And how you're super selfish with your time. Shush, 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 shush. Well, this um, this big boy Julius, me, strongest man in the world. I'm I'm pretty tired. It, it takes a lot to be the strongest man in the world. It takes a lot, and I'm tired. And you know, you told me to go out and help people with my big boy muscles and all my strength. And and you told me I had a very big job to do, but I don't want it anymore. I am done. You have been doing an amazing job, Julius. The Lord's presence, it's been with you the whole time. And I've been proud of you. You've grown in thoughtfulness, and you're beginning to learn how to put others before yourself. Well, yes, 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 but Julius is tired. Me, the strongest man. I helped one person, and now I want to sit at home. I want to have Helga May eat the meatballs with me and just enjoy our time and we can, you know, lift and eat and eat all the meatballs and relax. I don't want to be here anymore. Please, no, don't send me. Ju Julius, that's not how this works, right? You can't just up and leave when it gets hard. God promises to be with you all the time. Working through you, Jesus wants to stay and help bless others and love them. No, not storm out when the job gets too hard for the big boy. And there are so many people who need my love in this world. So I've called you, Julius, to do my work, to rely on me. Even when you don't have the strength. And don't allow that voice in your head to win. Some of the strongest people in this world are those who are tirelessly giving and loving others. Especially when it's hard for them. Why don't you take a seat over there, Julius, and, and I'll see what we can do. In the meantime, why don't you keep focusing on the verse we had written on the door you so kindly broke down? Oh, oh, okay. I will try. I'll put it together. Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard. Friends, yes. remember, we live in a very broken world with bullies and temptation to only think of ourselves. With uh, disagreements and arguments over beliefs. With people hurting and so many needing help. 
What possibly can we do? By ourselves, we're so inadequate. Yet, through God's grace and power, through the love of Jesus, we stand and confidently continue to say, Here I am, Lord. Send me. So, 